Welcome to another tech video you didn't know you needed. Today we're going to take a look at the RTX 5090 Founders Edition. So you're probably wondering how I got one. Well, I'm just a regular gamer who happened to get really lucky. I just woke up 30 minutes before they went on sale, refreshed Best Buy, probably saw the Add to Cart button within 10 seconds of it going up. I got in the queue, waited a bit, did the authentication, the SMS two-factor, waited a bit more, and was able to add to cart. I had no errors or timeouts. It was the smoothest Best Buy experience I ever had. And yes, I know this isn't normal, having experienced the 30 and 40 series launches. Anyways, if you're still on the hunt for a 50 series card, don't lose hope. I would recommend the Fix It, Fix It, Fix It YouTube channel and Discords for alerts for when the next drop happens. And please don't pay more than MSRP. Now on to the purpose of this video. The focus will be on what is the impact of dumping 575 watts of heat load into an air-cooled CPU. Does it dramatically increase CPU temperatures? I've run a few games with my RTX 4090 right before I swapped to, the, to my 5090. I wanted to see if the 5090 dramatically increased my CPU temperatures. I also wanted to see if my aging AMD Ryzen 9 5950X CPU is becoming a major bottleneck. So I'll be looking at CPU and GPU busy numbers. FPS numbers are secondary and are not the focus. There are dozens and dozens of other videos if you're interested in those kind of benchmarks. So here's the setup. The CPU is the Ryzen 9 5950X. The CPU cooler is a Noctua NHD15. The case is a Fantix Eclipse P500A. And the ambient room temperature was 78 degrees Fahrenheit during the 4090 tests. And a big cooler at 76 degrees Fahrenheit during the 5090 tests. So keep that in mind. We will start things off with Alan Wake 2. We have settings maxed out at 4K with full path tracing and frame gen on at 2x. My monitor caps out at 144Hz, so there's no point in going higher than that. As you can see, there is definitely an increase in CPU temperatures. I would say around 5 degrees Celsius, accounting for the difference in ambient temperatures, which is definitely significant, but at even at 74 degrees, we are still well below the maximum of 95. I would say the increase is not insignificant, expected, but also nothing to be concerned about. CPU busy and GPU busy numbers look good in this game. In general, you want CPU busy to be smaller than GPU busy, or they should be about equal, and GPU weight should be small. If you have a large CPU busy and smaller GPU busy, that usually means you are CPU bottlenecked. Here, Alan Wake 2 seems very well CPU optimized. 4090 footage was captured using the built-in NVIDIA app. 5090 footage was captured using Windows Game Bar. I noticed the NVIDIA app was messing up the busy numbers during capture on the 5090 for some reason, so I switched to game bar. So the FPS numbers are going to be lower across the bar. Next we have Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, which is a game that requires ray tracing. Again, we have maxed out 4K with frame generation on with full RT on. Here, CPU temps are a bit higher, but still under 75 degrees Celsius, with again around a 3 degree delta. What is interesting is the busy stats, where the game is definitely showing some CPU bottlenecking. Here we have a game that was just released on PC, Spider-Man 2. You know the drill, maxed out 4K with frame generation on. This time the GPU isn't under max load, hovering in the mid 80s in utilization, so temperature wise there isn't that much difference on the CPU. I'm seeing a bit of CPU bottlenecking here, probably because the GPU isn't being taxed as much. Well, let's get to the city and take care of Marco quick then. I 
want to get downtown fast. Swing it through Brooklyn. Jameson had you on the ground for the bugle? Still can't believe old Triple J is your new boss. <laughs> really loving the new regime. You'll whip him into shape in no time. So, what's up with Marco? It's been years since our last showdown. According to witnesses, he was running down Broadway yelling nonsense. They say he seemed angry and, and paranoid, delusional. He just exploded. Man, hopefully we... And finally, we have Destiny 2. I include it because, well, it's pretty much the game in all my videos, but also I wanted to see the effects of a low-load game would have. At 4K max settings and 141 FPS cap, the 5090 sits around 60% utilization. It means it's not pulling that many watts and not producing that much heat, so the CPU temperature really isn't that much different than the 4090. So some final thoughts. My 5950X CPU is starting to show its age a bit, but not as bad as I thought it would when paired with the RTX 5090, at least with the games I've tested so far. It's aging quite gracefully. It's been over four years since I've built this PC, so I'm kind of itching to do a new build. I'll wait for the reviews once the 9950X 3D comes out and then decide. So as far as does the RTX 5090 cook your CPU? Not as bad as I initially thought it would. Under real-world heavy gaming full path tracing load, expect no more than a 3 to 5 degrees Celsius increase over a 4090, which I think is acceptable. So no worries if you are air cooling your CPU. Upgrade away. Now finding a 5090 is a different issue.